Welcome back. It's now time for your midday sports. Now on a day heavily interrupted by rain, the West Indies remained in firm control of the second test against host Zimbabwe in Bulawayo at Stumps on day two as they hold a 175 run first innings lead. Replying to a paltry 115, the Windies were 290 for eight when rain and bad light stopped play for a second time in the day. Former captain Jason Holder is on three and Gouda Keshmoti on 11. Resuming the day on 133 for four, Roston Chase was top scored so far with 70 and Kyle Mayer's 30 shared in a 60-run fifth wicket partnership before Chase and Joshua Da Silva put on 85 runs for the sixth wicket. Da Silva 44 and Azari Joseph 4 were the other batsmen dismissed on the day. Now medium pacer Victor Enyoachi 3 for 56 and Brandon Mavuta 3 for 73 are the pick of the bowlers so far. Play is set to resume at 2.30 Tuesday morning. Jamaica's under-17 reggae boys got their World Cup qualifying campaign off to a positive start with a comprehensive 4-2 win over Caribbean neighbours Cuba on Sunday in their opening Group C match of the CONCACAF Championship in Guatemala. Orain Watson led the Jamaicans with a double scoring in the 56th and 75th minutes, while Jamani Bell in the 22nd minute and Ashton Gordon in the 70th minute were the other scorers. Didier Reniosio scored both goals for the Cubans in the 78th and 89th minutes. Head coach Meron Gordon was happy with the win, but notes that there are still areas they can sharpen up on. I could see the, the focus in the boys' eyes. The body language was, was very positive, you know, and even, you know, traveling from the hotel to the, to the stadium, you know, so I, I knew that they were going to give a good performance, um, a good start. They did that. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed with the ending, the last 10, 15 minutes of the game. But, you know, they are U17 players, you know. We made some changes based off injuries and cards. You know, we didn't want to risk too much. Um, I didn't think we settled, you know, how should, how should I see, see up the game as, as best as we could. Now, the young Jamaicans will next play Guadeloupe on Tuesday. Guadeloupe lost 2-1 to Costa Rica in their opening game on Sunday. Jamaica has previously qualified for two under-17 FIFA World Cups in 1999 and 2011. Humble Iron can move into fourth place in the Jamaica Premier League standings later this evening when they take on Dunbar Holden in the feature clash at the Ashenheim Stadium at Jamaica College. The Effortville-based club drew their last encounter against Waterhouse following defeat to Mount Pleasant. They're fifth on 21 points, one behind defending champions Harborview. Meanwhile, Dunbar Holden are also winless in their last two matches and were blanked 3-0 in their last game by leaders Mount Pleasant. Last season's runners-up, Dunbar Holden are sixth on 19 points. Both teams played out goalless drawn results in their fir or a goalless drawn result in their first meeting. Meanwhile, in the curtain raiser at five former champions, Tivoli Gardens take on Vere United. Tivoli, who are tenth on 16 points, won three of their last four matches, while Vere recorded consecutive one 0 wins in their last two outings. They sit twelfth on 13 points. Now the Kansas City Chiefs are NFL champions for the second time in four years after coming from behind to claim a thrilling 38-35 win over the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday. The Chiefs trailed for much of the Super Bowl for Super Bowl 57 in Phoenix and were 27-21 down heading into the final quarter. But they eventually took the lead before the Eagles leveled after a third rushing touchdown by Jalen Hurts, followed by a two-point conversion by the third-year quarterback. But a heroic 26-yard run by Patrick Mahomes, who suffered an ankle sprain earlier in the playoffs, made the ground for, the, for Harrison Butker to kick a game-winning field goal from 27 yards for the Chiefs. Mahomes' performance saw the 27-year-old become the first player since 1999 to win the season MVP, the Super Bowl, and the Super Bowl MVP in the same season. It was the first Super Bowl to feature two black quarterbacks and the first to feature brothers on opposing teams, namely Travis Kelsey and his older brother Jason, the Eagles' center. And that's it for your Midday Sports Report. Shamela, it's back to you. Thank you, Jordan. And that's the Midday News. I'm Shamela Pullen. Join us again at 7 for Primetime News. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.